Willie Townsend has held Georgia's House of Representatives District 147 seat for 10 years. Heath Clark hopes to replace him. I'm Randall Savage, and this is Close Up. And join us today are Willie Talton and Heath Clark, the two meet in Tuesday's Republican primary. Welcome to Close Up, gentlemen. Thank you. Good to be here. Mr. Clark, uh, during the campaign, you've said uh, that basic or core Republican values aren't being represented now. Give us an example of a core value that you think is not being represented. Uh, one example would be the recently passed uh, car sales tax. Um, and a lot of people don't know, but starting in 2016, there's an unelected commission behind the scenes that has the authority to raise that rate up to 9%. It's a committee or a commission that is appointed five to seven people. And uh, them having the authority to raise that rate, it takes, it takes the voice of the voter out of government. Uh, they can get rid of their representatives, they can get rid of their senators, they can get rid of the governor, but they can't get rid of that commission. And, you know, we're supposed to represent, Republicans are supposed to represent limited government, and that's the exact opposite. That is big government that is detached away from the people. Well, that, that thing you're talking about went through a, a general assembly that's controlled by Republicans and signed into law by a Republican governor. Yes, sir. And that's what I mean by we have Republicans, almost a supermajority um, legislature, but I feel like our principles are not getting represented even with Republicans holding the office. Mr. Townsend? Well, I, as far as the reading it, just like he was saying, I know that uh, there was, uh, he had didn't mention that there would be no more Avalon taxes on the person. When a person buys his car, they pay that tax up front. So there are no more Avalon tax, and now they are just paying what the tag costs. And that's what basically a lot of the people wanted, to get rid of that tax. So that's 9% don't come into play here? No. Oh, it, it does. Uh, starting in 2016, they, they did replace the ad valorem with the car sales tax. I, I'm not debating that or I'm not speaking against that. What I'm speaking against is the part of the legislation that removes the voice of the voter from government. It detaches the power of the people and puts it into the bureaucracy of government and and that's the part of the legislation I'm speaking against but even on the tax the part of getting rid of the ad valorem and going to the car sales tax it hurts counties like Houston County um, because they're no longer able to charge their sales tax and so Houston County is losing money under this new car sales tax because they have now all the money goes up to the state well we're not getting back from the state the amount of money we used to collect on our own, and it's actually, it is hurting Houston County. Good. As far as uh, hearing that from the constituents when this was being done, I haven't heard that part. The people that I have heard from are well pleased with the, we're getting rid of the Avalon taxes, and they just have that one tax to pay when they buy the car. And that one tax would include what the state don't normally get anyway? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, the nine percent. I, I still don't understand where this nine percent is coming from. The commission, starting in 2016, right now it's around seven percent. In 2015, it bumps up to around seven and a half percent. But starting in 2016, that commission is going to have the authority to raise that rate to nine percent. The so one, it, it's, the one it's, is now being uh, when you buy the car. The one is now being paid. The car sales they tax. They, can when raise you, it. they will have the authority to raise that rate to nine percent. And, you know, a lot of people, at first they thought, hey, we're getting rid of the birthday tax. But as they're starting to understand what's all really in this replacement of the birthday tax with the car sales tax, the TABAT, they're, they're not happy with it. When they're realizing, when Houston County citizens are realizing that Houston County is losing money, and now they're going to have to find, a, in order for Houston County to function, they're going to have to find other ways to, to gain the to gain the revenue that they've lost, they're going to get more taxes from in Houston County to pay for what they were already getting. But also on top of that, they're realizing if I finance my car, my taxes are getting rolled into the principal value of my loan, and now I'm paying an interest rate on my tax. And, and these kind of things, when people are realizing that, and not only that, but if, if, if you were a dad and you wanted to give your car or truck to your son and just give it to him, now they're paying a tax. They, when they go to register that tag under a new name, they have to pay a tax on it. Hmm. Mr. Tobin, is Housing County losing money? I don't think so. Uh, 
as far as this is what uh, Mr. Clark is relaying, uh, this wasn't brought up during the study of passing that bill. So uh, that's about as much as I can say on that as far as all this about what Houston County is losing. I don't think so. Uh, legalizing medical marijuana made it through the House this past year. Uh, it didn't make it through the Senate. How do you feel about it, Mr. Uh, I think it's a good bill and looking forward to uh, voting on it again when it comes up. Uh, I think it's a good bill. Uh, when we had the people to come up and do testimony about it, the children that you would see that was brought to that hearing uh, and the problems that they're having, I'm, I'm for it 100%. Mr. Clark. I, I agree. I, I would have I would have voted for that piece of legislation. I think it's a step in the right direction. And what I mean by that is it, there's still a lot of restrictions on the uh, the patent belonging to a certain pharmaceutical company um, and and it only being applied to certain diseases or ailments. Uh, and what I would like to see done is remove some of those restrictions and allow science and medical researchers to come into the state, bring jobs with them to come into the state and start doing research. Uh, and open up opportunities for good, well-paying research jobs to expand and see what what all can can this help in and just expand the research to help people and bring jobs to Georgia. Uh, and you would add that to the bill? Uh, eventually, yes. I would work towards seeing stuff like that be allowed into the bill. How about you, Mr. All of us get thought anything that's going to bring jobs into the state, but the first thing that we're talking about is the help that that drug will do uh, by helping these people that uh, need that drug. So that's the first thing that we're looking at. You're a retired lawman. Yes, sir. Right now, it's uh, illegal to uh, bring that into the state, uh, but the, the bill that passed, would you would have had to brought it in. Uh, to the state. Yes, sir. How would you get around that? What, as far as bringing it bringing in? Bringing it in and not, not get arrested. Well, you know, still, it has to, once it's passed, it's, it'll be regulated. So all that'll be under control. So the laws and things that will be incorporated with that. Okay. Uh, I believe with, uh, with the transportation, I believe the bill allowed certain, like Emory University and, and certain a couple of universities, maybe the University of Georgia and Emory University, to allow them to harvest it, uh, to grow it and harvest it. So it wouldn't have to be transported from Colorado into Georgia. And if they got stopped in Alabama, they're going to get arrested. It wouldn't have done that. Okay. Well, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with Close Up. Close up on our guests today are Heath Clark, a software engineer, and Willie Talton, a retired law enforcement guy. And Mr. Clark is a challenger for the District 147 seat, and Mr. Talton is the incumbent. Uh, this year, the General Assembly approved amendments in the gun law that allows licensed carriers to take their weapons to churches, providing church leaders to approve it, bars, and schools in some instances. How do you feel about the gun law? Uh, I'm would have voted for that bill um, and think it was it was a good piece of legislation. To, to me, the, the real issue that it established was private property rights again. It doesn't say, hey, you have to carry to church or a church has to allow it. What it establishes is the church be owning private property can say, we, we are allowing guns on our property or we're not allowing guns on our property. And it also allows for schools to establish or school boards to establish a policy to protect itself from mass shootings occurring in classrooms where if a gunman walked into a classroom, now there might be some teachers in there trained with some kind of certification that will be able to return fire and protect their students and their own lives. Mr. Tappen? Well, you, you know I voted on that piece of legislation, which I thought was a good bill and still uh, uh, think it's a good bill. And, uh, you have a lot of people misinterpreting it. They feel like now it's just going to open it up for everybody to carry a gun. But it's for people who has a permit and only limit to those private businesses that says, 
whether it's a church or establishment or what, saying that we don't want a gun on our property. Whether you have a permit or not, you cannot carry that weapon on that property. And that's, I go along with that 100%. If you choose to not, if you run in a business and if you choose not to allow weapons in your establishment, all well and good. Churches the same way. Some churches will allow weapons in their churches and some won't. So that's their choice. And that's what I go along with. Primary sponsor of that bill uh, initially had in there college students uh, could have guns on campus. Uh, and there had been some indication that might surface again at some point. Do you see it coming back next year, Mr. Tom? It probably will. As you know, all of this is probably pushed by public interest, interest uh, and it might be. Uh, you know, when a person is uh, issued a permit, uh, he or she should know about uh, the operation and the, of a weapon. So it may come back, I don't know. Mr. Carr? Uh, I hope it does. And if, and if I'm elected to serve the people of Houston County, I, I will make sure it does. Um, and, and the reason why is I have a real problem when we don't have, when we, are, when we ask young men and women, 18, 19 year olds, 20 year olds, and first of all, only a t you have to be 21 in order to get the carry permit. But when we ask them to go overseas to a desert and carry a firearm and defend this country, but when they come back home, we're gonna tell them to go to college and you're not gonna be able to defend yourself. And that's how you see things like Virginia Tech happen. Um, so I will work to see that, that every citizen in Georgia who is allowed to carry a firearm, is allowed to carry a firearm and, and to defend themselves. On campus? On, on a college campus, yes, sir. And as I recall, when that portion of the bill was working its way through the General Assembly, I think every college president and the Board of Regents all opposed this. They, they didn't want it, so. Popularity isn't always an indication of something being right. Um, uh, and, and so, again, my issue is these citizens have a Second Amendment right to defend themselves and, and to, to keep and bear arms. And, and we, ha we can send them overseas to defend this country, but we're going to ask them to be defenseless on their own when they're going to class. I, I do have a problem with that. Mr. Thompson? You're right. The professors and uh, instructors and things uh, did have opposition to it. And this is just something that's the purpose of hearing. We yeah. listen to both sides, the professors and the public opinion. That's the reason we have hearings. So I'm saying I, we have to take it one step at a time. And I will be listening at that one step at a time. Mm. I'm for people protecting themselves and for the Second Amendment. I'm for that. Mm. Okay, some state lawmakers want a reduction in state income taxes, but in so doing, they suggest increasing or levying taxes in other areas, such as services. How do you feel about that? Go ahead, Mr. Scott. I would be for moving to a, uh, a removing the income tax and the corporate tax and going towards a state sales tax, just like Florida and Tennessee that surround us. So, um, I, I would be for reducing the income tax to zero percent and going towards a state sales tax. Mr. Thompson, I can agree with that. I, I look favorable toward the sales tax. So, the, how much would the sales tax be if that were to come about? It, right now, a penny sales tax generates, what, about a billion dollars a year? Somewhere like that. Some of them want to say 3% or whatever, but this is something we have to come up with a figure or whatever to analyze what, but I am for mm -hmm. a sales tax. Okay. And that's sometimes called a fair tax on the federal on level. On the federal level, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Clark, you uh, you said you want to eliminate property taxes and income taxes, and uh, if you do that, what's going to happen? You're going to have to cut the budget. You have to raise some money somewhere. Well, I believe you would have to. Uh, I'm for cutting uh, unnecessary spending, but I also believe that when you history shows when you lower tax burdens on, on citizens, the economy flourishes because they're able to keep the money into the marketplace, and I also. Uh, you know, so cutting property taxes, I, I believe that right now under the current system, you're basically essentially just leasing your land from the government. You never own your property. Um, so I am for getting rid of property taxes, 
and you would see you would see citizens retirees flock to this state if you had no income tax and you had no property tax and they would bring their retirement money with them to spend in Georgia's economy and, inv and invest in the private market and see you would see the economy flourish so would I be for cutting spending absolutely um, but do I think that revenue would increase uh, by cutting taxes absolutely Mr. Thompson Certainly, you know, that's what we stand for. The Republican Party stand for less taxes. Sure, I'm for that. That's the reason I'm for the sales tax. So naturally, and just like I have to agree with him on that, by doing away with this property tax or whatever, but we still have to operate under some form of revenue. But uh, uh, that's the reason I uh, stand for the sales tax. So, yes, it would increase, I think, uh, the growth of the state. You, uh, you, people do move to Florida, but uh, you, you think that would spill over to Georgia? If, uh, I, I if absolutely. The people. Yes, sir. I, I do think so that um, you, you would see them move into Georgia or move up from Florida into Georgia. Well, it would help our state grow. I say that. I which way are they going to be moving? But naturally, people have a tendency to flock where they are. Uh, less taxes, especially businesses and things, and that's what's going to make your state grow. Mm -hmm. Businesses and you know that bring jobs and things that is healthy for the state. Because okay, we'll take another break. And be right back with close up. That was close up and our guests today are the two Republican candidates for the District 147 seats, which covers parts of Warner Robins and Houston County, Mr. Heath Clark and Mr. Willie Talton. Uh, it's called the Education Accountability, and it would implement programs that are designed to increase flexibility in the way public schools go about educating folks. Mr. Talton, what do you think of that? Well, I'm, I'm strictly for education plus I'm strictly for local control. I believe that uh, communities should have control of their education system. Uh, uh, that's the purpose of their board of election, I mean say, uh, school board members, school superintendent, I think they should have fully uh, uh, control of that and I support that 100%. So. And how about Common Core, how do you feel about that? I'm against it, I wouldn't vote for it. And that's because it... Well, that, you know, you're getting government, having the government to come in, the federal government to come in and tell us how we should operate then. Mr. Clark? The first piece of legislation you mentioned, I'm not exactly familiar with that one. Um, but I, I do believe if it's coming from the federal government, I'm against it. I, I am for state and local and parental control of education. Um, with Common Core, I'm against Common Core. Again, I'm against the federal government imposing standards upon a state, and also the Common Core standards that are currently in Georgia are lower than what the Georgia standards were before Common Core. I also believe in free market solutions to things. So when you have competition between states competing to better their educational system, and, and they're, it's gonna, they're gonna be experimenting with what works and what doesn't work, and you're gonna raise the the quality of education in the United States through competition. I will say this, um, every Republican running for an office now speaks about being against Common Core, but it's in our state. Who allowed it to get here? When did it get here? It's been within the last 10 years that it went through the Georgia Assembly and got into the state of Georgia. Now we're fighting to remove it from the state, but it's here. And it's here because of the Georgia legislature approving it and allowing it to become part of Georgia's educational system. Did you vote for that, Mr. Thompson? Vote for that. Common, common, common Core. Core? No, I didn't vote for Common Core. It didn't, uh, didn't make it out of committee this time. But as far as the standards, uh, there are standards already set. But uh, uh, like we're saying, uh, as far as we keep in and maintaining local control. I've been there for the longest. I have a son that is an educator in the community, Houston County, and uh, I feel like he does a good job in the, in the curriculum that they have. I feel like it's a good curriculum. What Mr. Heath was saying 
is a competition deal. That's the reason we have such a good system in Houston County. Once you have that competitiveness going, people usually want to flock to communities that have and stand for a good community. I mean, it's a good educational system, and that is brought on by the leadership uh, having this and parental guidance. So you think charter schools? I go along with that. I can support charter school. I did. I support it all. I think a person should have a right to choose where they want the kids and how they want the kids educated. Mr. Clark? I, I like charter schools. Um, I, I think it's a, a good alternative. Um, and keeping a teachers, t keeping teachers accountable, um, being able to, again, it's not based on just your tenure in the system that you get your your raises and stuff. It's based on results and. And so when it's controlled locally, like on a smaller scale, they're able to provide more oversight and, and, and better observe what's going on. Instead of having just standards in place, they're able to really see what's working and apply it. So, This year, the lawmakers enacted legislation requiring drug tests for welfare recipients. Some say they should be required to work. What do you think about that? On the surface, it's great. Um, just as with most government programs or, or government involvement, there's a, there tends to be unintended consequences. Uh, I know like in Florida, when, when they implemented drug testing, uh, Florida lost money. They were spending more money to implement the test and have the test done than they were finding people abusing or using drugs while on welfare. So it became a loss for the state. <coughs> so those are the kinds of things I would be weary of. Again. If, if somebody's taking money from the state, I, when I go to work, I can get I get drug tested. So, if somebody's getting a check, I don't have a problem with drug testing. It's just it call it can it cost more than it saves? And the answer is yes. Want to put them to work? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I think I, was it Ronald Reagan that said a job is the best welfare program ever invented, uh, or something like that. I might be twisting the quote a little bit, but. I believe in work and a good work ethic, yes. How about you, Mr. Talton? You want to put them well, work? Yes, uh, and you can note and see from my record I voted for that bill. Um, I think any time you're receiving any uh, substance like that from the government, I think there should be some restriction on it that you do have some kind of accountability as far as drug testing or whatever, IDs or whatever. So, yes, I'm for it, and that's the reason I voted for it. Courts around the country. Overturning laws that ban same-sex marriages. Mr. Clark, how do you feel about same-sex marriages and courts overturning the bans? Uh, I'm a Christian, uh, and so for me and in, in my faith, it is, uh, it is, you know, God designed marriage to be between a man and a woman. The reason why they're banning and the reason why the courts are getting involved is because the government's involved in in marriage, and I would like to see the government removed from marriage. Um, and so they're getting involved because of tax purposes. You know, a, a, a married couple is receiving a tax break, and or you know they leave an inheritance for somebody, and they receive a tax break. Whereas if a homosexual couple left something for somebody, they're not going to receive that tax break, and that's why they're getting involved. And I'd like to see the government out of those situations altogether. Mr. Tappen, I stand against it. I think this is an anointment against God. Uh, it's meant to be man and woman, and that's the way I stand on it, and I continue to stand on it. Okay. Uh, we're almost out of time. I want you to touch on this. We can uh, abortion. Uh, of course, it's legal in the United States right now, but how do you feel about it? I'm not for it, abortion at all, If uh, unless it's going to save the latest life or something like that, but uh, uh, I'm not for it. I, I feel like there's a place for children, and this is something else that I, I can't go along with. I'm 100% pro-life. Uh, my wife and I, we've had hard discussions on like if she was ever raped and conceived, we would I would take the responsibility of raising that child as my own. Um, I am against abortion. Uh, I believe life begins at conception, and it should be protected. So how about the life of the mother? And, and that would be the only situation where if, if the mom's life was, was at risk. 
Uh, we're down to our final minute, but what do you think about ethics reform? Do you need any more ethics reform than what was passed a couple of years ago that restricted it at $100 a day per lawmaker? Um, I'd have to look into that. Again, there's always unintended consequences uh, with, with things. Ethical people don't need ethics reform to behave ethically. Mr. Talbot? Uh, the same thing, but um, I think that this is something that we'll continue to look at, and that's all deal with politics still. All right, gentlemen. Good luck to you on Tuesday. I'm Randall Savage. See you next time on Close Up.